by tonight as they came in and are beginning to enjoy the nice signs of spring that we're seeing. I think we're all ready for that. Um, I will start my report tonight with a personnel update. I'm pleased to let you know that we have a new English language eighth grade teacher. Her name is Deborah Langlois over at Webster Middle School. We've also hired a new counselor over at Park Avenue Elementary School, Stephanie Laventori. And I am pleased to let you know that Officer Dan Melhouse of the Webster Police will be shadowing Detective Tim Whiting a few days a week starting soon, um, as he will be our new SRO for the 22-23 school year. We had a nice meeting with um, Officer Melhouse and Chief Shaw this week at our district safety meeting, so he was able to meet our administrators, and um, he will have the wonderful luxury of getting um, being able to follow uh, Tim Whiting and uh, get to know the buildings with uh, a partner. So we're pleased about that. I would like to let you know that we have received the resignations of John Uno, an ABA at Park Avenue Elementary School, and Danielle Mitchell, an ABA at Park Ave Elementary School. Uh, just to give you some good news, we, uh, Monique and I, attended the MSBA meeting on March 2nd, and the MSBA board voted to uh, fund estimating amounts of 51 to 53 million dollars based on our project uh, projection of 100 million, 101 million dollars. This is truly fantastic news. Um, again, this is all for reimbursable um, costs. Uh, we've been hitting the roadshow as we've been telling you. We have two roadshows tomorrow. We have a busy day. We'll be at the senior center in the morning and then we have a parent informational night scheduled over at Bartlett High School at 6 p.m. If your phones are on, you probably should put them on silent because a one call is going out uh, tonight to remind families, and that's been posted on Facebook and all sorts of uh, areas. We also have, for parents who are watching and community members who are watching, another parent community forum on March 30th. And again, we always direct our, our community to the website to see the updates on the Bartlett High School renovation project. Um, we held some assemblies uh, last week for 7th and 8th grade students over at the high school. We were able to show them some innovation pathways presentations and how that may relay into a building project. And we also held a, another assembly for the Bartlett High School students on the innovative pathways programming um, and courses um, that they may be able to choose for this upcoming or next upcoming year and showed them the uh, spaces with some different designs um, because they had seen it before. Any questions on that? Uh, I do want to give you an update on our Bartlett High School principal search. As you know, NESDEC has been uh, consulted, con contracted out um, to lead the search. Uh, consultant Mr. Don Baudet of NESDEC is in the process of facilitating assessment forums uh, he will be holding them for district leaders, teachers, and staff, and parents. On um, Yesterday, he met with our district leaders um, without me, and they will, he will be meeting with Bartlett High School teachers and staff on March 14th, and then there will be a parent and community forum. Uh, information has been shared out with um, staff and parents and community members, and it is posted on our website. Uh, they... Preliminary screening committee has been formed. Um, the consultant will be meeting with them April 7th to review protocols, develop interview questions, review the confidentiality of and access of information of any applicants. The committee will meet again on April 12th, and they will be identifying candidates to be screened. Our goal is to have at least 8 to 10 to interview. Um, they'll be finalizing uh, interview questions and setting up their own interview schedule. The, I'm pleased to share with you the following people are on the preliminary screening committee. Uh, Dr. Patty McKay will be the in-house lead along with the consultant Don Baudet of NESDEC, uh, Ms. Gina Nieves, the assistant principal, Ms. Colleen Nassis, an ELA teacher and WEA president, Ms. Melissa Arsenault, a special education teacher, Mr. Ben Jenis, Business Marketing over at Bartlett, Mr. Peter Carney, Chorus and the One Gold Teacher, 
Miss Heidi Peterson, our principal at Webster Middle School, parent Jessica Guerrero, she's a parent of an incoming student from the Webster Middle School, and parent Maria Monsura, she's a parent of two Bartlett High School students, and Elizabeth Smara, our re-engagement specialist. Um, they will be ranking the highest um, candidates and sending the, those candidates to my office for further interviewing. So there'll be lots more that will be coming from NESDEC on this. Um, and the good news, one of the good news things of working with NESDEC is uh, since we're contracting out with them, we will be receiving a special education trend report for free uh, based on our district data and 10-year and enrollment um, prediction for the entire district for free. So I'll keep you posted on that. And other updates, uh, we have some good news to share with you. Jill Chapdelaine and Abigail Callahan, our project manager for Innovation Pathways, received $7,200 from Blackstone Valley Educational Foundation. These funds will be used to support the training for teachers for the Project Lead the Way courses. Um, and to purchase equipment needed for both the health and human service pathways and the advanced manufacturing pathways. We've done a lot of work recently, and um, Ms. Perangeli has also been involved in that, um, to really um, figure out what we need for these courses and apply for the grants that are out there. So Abigail Callahan is in the process of applying for a very large grant through DESE, the Capital Skills Grant, which would fund major equipment for these types of programs. So um, we're trying to be efficient and effective and streamline um, our purchases and also uh, maximize the use of grants that are coming our way. And I'm pleased to say that we have been very fortunate to receive the amount of support that we have, we have been. Um, and other good news, um, which is not in my report in your uh, school committee packet, I had shared with you the project-based learning grant that we had applied for through 1-8 and the project-based foundation for Bartlett High School. It was a, a grant for a three-year supports for teachers who were interested in project-based learning. And we had two teachers at Bartlett um, that were interested in it, and we applied. And unfortunately, we didn't get it. But because of the work that we're doing um, in our district to really advance our educational programming at the high school, the project-based learning um, organization reached back out to me through the support of 1-8. And today I had a meeting with them. And they are um, willing to donate the cost for five interested Bartlett High School teachers to participate in the um, project-based learning one-on-one -on -one summer training, which is sort of a slower pace um, entry into the project-based learning at their cost. So we know we have two teachers that were previously interested in it, and we are uh, searching for three more interested candidates to, um, to do that. I, I say it's good news because it's not often that when you don't get a grant, people call you back up and say, hey, we really like what you're doing, and we want you to be a part, and we can offer this. So I'll keep you posted on that. In other good news, um, as you know, we partner well with uh, MAFRE, and they would like to start an early talent program with us. This program is really designed to work with seniors who may be interested in entry-level positions over at MAFRE. So on March 30th, there'll be an assembly over at the high school for interested students. Um, and uh, then in April, there'll be a site visit for those students to go over to MAFRE. And MAFRE will be partnering with the students that are interested to help them fill out the application process, because it's competitive. Um, and they really do want to have um, a springboard avenue for students to have entry level positions. One of the great things about this program is, um, you know, sometimes as high school students, you don't really know what a company can offer you. And this company offers extensive health benefits and educational benefits. So it's, it's not just for students who may want to go into the workforce. It could be for students who are thinking about community college and maybe taking online courses and doing a slower entry. They do have a, a reimbursement for um, educational benefits. So I think it's um, an avenue to open some doors for some of our students. And they're willing to take, I think, eight to 10 students. So um, 
We'll keep you posted on that. Our March 4th half day PD schedules are in your packet. And um, as I typically do, I'll just let you know that the reportable incidents to the state for the month of February, there were seven at Bartlett High School, 16 at Webster Middle School, and 14 over at Park Ave Elementary School. And uh, I already told you about the upcoming events um, for the Bartlett Renovation Project. Um, also, and uh, is Kindergarten Information Night tom tomorrow night over at Park Ave Elementary School. And then on March 10th, we're bringing back Bartlett Showcase Night. Uh, that is for eighth grade students and their families and ninth grade students and their families to really come and learn about the Bartlett High School programming. All the teachers will be there. They'll be, um, they're setting it up differently to engage people. And then I'm sure that Ms. Peterson will share with you that there's a semi-formal dance coming up over at the middle school for the seventh and eighth graders. So I'm pleased to say that, you know, things are really normal. We're doing everything that we possibly can. Um, we're not wearing masks at school. Um, kids are, uh, doing the typical things again. So we just need that good weather and I think we'll be back to full normal. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Dr. Gogan. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Through the chair, yes, I would just like to say thank you to MAPFRI. They do an awful lot for our schools and a lot in our town to bring things to the community. And I think this is a great opportunity for our students. That's a good point. Thank you, Ms. Mallet. I agree. Any other comments or questions? Well, hearing none, the next item on the agenda is the business manager report. Good evening, Mrs. Perangeli. Good evening, thank you. Um, I'm just gonna skip over the first item, uh, which is school building committee update. I think Dr. Gogan um, gave you most of the updates that I had on my list. So the only other thing to add to that is we're trying to put together a tri-board meeting or a uh, four-board meeting, I should say, for Monday, um, which looks like I think it's going to happen. So stay tuned on that. Check your email frequently um, for updates on that. But other than that, uh, she pretty much covered the report. Um, second item I have is food service update. Uh, in your package, you should have received a food service financial report. Um, as you can tell by looking at the report, uh, the food service account is doing pretty well. Um, we are showing uh, a good balance in the report due to a couple reasons. Um, we are receiving the highest um, reimbursement rate that um, the state has to offer or the federal government has to offer. That is actually being done across the United States nationwide um, for our pandemic relief for COVID. Uh, they are giving all districts the summer rate, which is much higher. Typically in 2019, our rate for free lunch was 309 per meal. Um, currently we are getting 456 per meal in reimbursement. Um, that's across the nation. So uh, we are doing well financially. They are holding our own. Um, another reason why we're doing well, which is not a good thing, is staff. We are constantly running short staffed. Um, we have had people out due to many reasons. At first it was COVID, we've had some injuries, we've had people, uh, four employees leave for full-time jobs. Um, as you know, you know, years ago, the food service used to be lunches. We used to have moms who come in and work a few hours just to, you know, work during the day to earn a little extra money. Um, but now we're doing breakfast, lunch, we have longer hours now, longer days, and people are just looking for full-time work. We're seeing less interest in those people coming out looking for a three-hour job. So um, Ellen has been um, in the kitchen a lot this year. She's actually in there right now. She's doing double duty. She's going in there in the morning. She's helping prep meals, and then she's coming here in the afternoon to take care of her bookkeeping and anything else management that needs to be done. So she has just been um, amazing in covering. So we have not had to shut down any of our kitchens. Um, she's a big part of that. Everybody's pitching in. So hopefully in the future we'll see, we'll get back to level because we're currently running two short and two kitchens. Um, we're managing, we're getting through. 
one of the ways we've also helped the kitchen is we've stopped prepping meals a lot on Fridays um, due to two reasons. On Fridays, we were having issues getting, it used to be like pizza day, and because of the shortages with meals and food, we haven't been able to get pizza. So we went to our local vendors in town and said, would anybody like to pick up a day delivering pizza and making pizza? We kept it local within town, went to all our vendors. They have to uh, follow all the nutritional requirements. They have to follow the allergy requirements. Um, so we have three vendors in town that had stepped up and they're prepping meals. It's not easy to get uh, somebody at 10 o'clock on Friday morning making 500 pizzas for uh, a school for people, but they are doing it. So um, that's helped our staff a little bit with shortages and trying to balance, you know, what they're prepping because menus have been changing uh, frequently throughout. So um, we're happy that we're having the local benefit of our um, community also um, getting some of the benefits of helping us out. So that's good. Um, what else do I want to say? We've also done, um, taken an increase in our DOD Fresh. Our D, um, Department of Defense has a bid for fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, it's all U.S. grown. And when that program first started, school districts were limited to the amount that they could get. So when we first started, we were receiving about $10,000, I want to say, in fresh fruits and veggies. It's all seasonal, so you kind of get what you're growing here. Um, but they've slowly been increasing that, and we are taking the full benefit now. They've increased it 50%, so we're up to 40% uh, $40,000 in fresh fruits and vegetables that we're getting, and we're using it. Um, we're maximizing that. We're actually using less of the government portion because these are entitlement monies that the government give us. So some of it is called brown box where you can get your meats, your chickens, your frozen fruit foods and stuff like that. And then you have your fresh fruits and vegetables. We're putting more money to the fresh stuff and taking less of the frozen processed stuff. And we're using that. So um, we're seeing savings there because we're not purchasing that now weekly from our other vendors. So it's the offset of the government for where we're saving money. And that just goes um, also to our staff who are doing a lot more prep because with that fresh fruit and vegetables, you're slicing, you're cutting, you're using it, you're, you're delivering, you're bagging your own fresh. Um, you're not buying the little prepackaged items to put in, they're cutting and bagging and getting that and serving it. So um, our kids are eating better, healthier, and we're saving money. So um, good job to them in the cafeteria for doing that. Um, we've also received some state pandemic money um, in the food service department. We received about $44,000 a couple months ago. That was helped to offset any cost um, also in the increased pricing for bags, for bagging all your foods. Um, we use some of that money to purchase emergency meals. Um, kits that are already packaged that don't have to be refrigerated in the event that we had to shut down a kitchen, could we service our kids and give them lunches? So we've used some of the money for that. Um, they've been really busy in the kitchens. Um, we've also applied for the supper program. So um, Ellen um, has worked with some of, she's gotten some feedback from some of the schools as far as those later programs like the before and after school program where we're already already providing a late afternoon snack the only thing that's missing to make it qualify for a dinner would be a vegetable so by adding that vegetable it can count as a supper which would give us more benefits to provide meals also not only at night but if we wanted to provide um, any kind of programs during february break april break because you're not allowed to offer any kind of meal for national school lunch program during the break periods. But under the supper program, we can. So in the event that we want to hold programs during the breaks, we'll have the opportunity to be, to be able to feed our kids. Um, and that's pretty much what's going on in the food service world. I don't know if you have any questions. Um, I can certainly answer any or bring any feedback. Or, Ellen's always happy to come talk to you guys. She loves talking about her program. She's doing a fantastic job. I can't thank her and the ladies enough. Um, it is a changing, it is. it has changed immensely over just, I would say, six to seven years. 
Um, when I first started here, um, even I, I worked at one year as the interim food service, took that on as a responsibility. And we were doing breakfast and lunch, but it was a lot less demand. Now our kids are eating all day, and the amount of food, it, it used to be traditional, you bought a lot of frozen or prepared food already, and you were just reheating food. It's no longer like that. Our, our ladies are cooking. They're peeling. They're cutting. They're cooking fresh food um, on a regular basis, and it's not just a, a quick little snack. It's breakfast, lunch, and now we're talking about dinner. So the program has really grown and changed. And that's all due to the work of um, Ellen. So I think I just want to give her a big shout out. And anytime you guys have questions about the food service program, she is happy to come here and talk to you about that. Yeah, Mrs. Prangley, I, I continue to be um, astounded with uh, the quality of the food that we're giving to our kids. And, you know, just looking at the finances, it's amazing that we're able to give such good quality food to the kids and um, be saving money at the same time. So it's definitely been a, a tide change uh, over the years. So uh, great job. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it continues. Um, we monitor regularly. And the rate at the higher rate is due to end this year. But there is um, an effort going on across the nation to try and keep that high because everybody understands the importance of making sure that kids are eating healthy and they're getting what they need during the day at school. So, um, you know, let's let's keep our fingers crossed that that continues because it really helps us provide um, the additional food, the healthy food, not just the processed food to our kids. Okay. Can I just add one comment? Yes, Ms. Blair. Um, Ms. Perangeli, please um, thank Ellen for for me. I also am very interested to see if the supper program can take off here. I know before break there's a real need to, to feed our children over the break. So I think that that would be an amazing add to the programs that are already here. That's another benefit of the um, supper program is that it would allow us to also send food home on weekends. Oh, so that would be, so as we get through. Wonderful. So, so mm -hmm. we're looking at those options. Um, we're waiting to see. She just filled out the application, mm -hmm. so we haven't gotten approval yet. Um, but we're waiting to see that. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay. No more questions. Next, for not so happy news, um, the Bartlett High boiler. So recently, about a week ago, or a few days almost a week ago now, um, we came into a boiler leak. Um, as you know, at the high school, we are operating on one full boiler, and then we have one smaller boiler. Um, smaller boiler is not enough to heat the entire building. Um, currently, thank goodness for the warmer weather we've been experiencing, because our boiler has been shut down this week. Uh, at the high school because of the leak. We called in a company. They took a look at the boiler. Um, they believe they can fix it. The parts are obsolete on that right now. So they are building actually a couple parts on the North Shore. Um, they are going to be coming in on Monday or Tuesday and hopefully fixing and repairing the boiler and getting that back online. But these are the kind of, um, if we were a month ago, I would have been looking for emergency repair and um, potentially bringing in a backup boiler um, to heat the building. We were just fortunate of the timing where we hit the 50 degree weather and the building has maintained warm enough um, temperatures in the classrooms um, to keep us from needing that emergency repair. So hopefully it stays that way, we can get it back online but that just, you know, is another reason why we, if, if we're not getting into this project, we're going to have to look at making some immediate repairs um, to the equipment here at the high school because it, it's always a risk running on one of those, just one boiler without a backup for the building. So I will keep you um, up to date on that. We should be able to be back up and running, we're hopeful, on Monday or Tuesday of next week. and. Keep that warm weather coming. Oh, we need it. Just while we're talking about the Bartlett High School building, I think it's important to note that we, you know, with the rain instead of the snow, we are seeing increased leaks. 
Um, so uh, many of the hallways do have buckets, and um, that's definitely cumbersome for the learning environment. Yep. I think you can attest to those buckets in the hallways. We just took a walk around, and now uh, they're pretty much lined up. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we're doing our best to patch and to maintain, but once the ice starts melting on the roof, and things start spreading, uh, the leaves start popping up, and then we get our companies back in once it melts to see if we can fix them and repair them and get them back. Um, so they're not leaking. And then over at the middle school, um, the good news keeps coming. We also had an issue there with our heat. Um, I think Ms. Peterson can attest to that. One of our main network, our HVAC system works on two network controllers. There's a main, and then there's a secondary. And what that does is they kind of talk to one another, and it controls the heat through the building. So the main controller um, broke. It is absolutely down. So what that means is it, it, it couldn't be repaired. We're going to have to buy a new system and update that so it can talk to the secondary system so it can operate. Um, so we are currently receiving quotes on that um, because of the price. I had to get multiple quotes, so we're waiting on getting that finalized. And as a temporary fix, they had to go into each room on the unit vents and open each temperature, um, each controller manually. So that way it allows heat. So they do have heat in the middle school. They just don't have control over the heat. So you could have hot areas. You could have warm areas. Um, until we can get the controller fixed and talking again to operate and control the heat. So we, sh last I checked, we were waiting for one more quote to come in, and then we will proceed further on getting that repair. I'll bring additional information to you, but, you know, things are just starting to break, and we need to maintain them through the district. Um, and, you know, the guys have been really proactive. It's just nothing, it's just 15 years old already, 70, actually 17 years at the middle school already. So time flies when you're having fun. So it, it, they're seeing their end of life on certain things. So we will um, fix it, repair it, and um, I will give you an update on that once I have uh, identified the final cost for that project. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mrs. Perangeli. Thank you. Should have ended with the food service. That was happier. That, that, was, <laughs> that was great news, actually. Are there any questions or comments from the committee for Mrs. Perangeli? No, hearing none, we'll move on. The next item on the agenda is the principal report. Joining us tonight is Heidi Peterson from Webster Middle School. Good evening, Ms. Peterson. Good evening, everybody. Um, so I just want to speak to a couple things that Dr. Gogan and um, Ms. Perangeli spoke to. And um, first of all, the masks. And so it's, again, nice to see people without masks on and um, reacquaint with uh, the 6th, 7th, and 8th graders and see new faces that, uh, with the 5th graders. We do still have a, a fairly large number of students and staff wearing masks. Um, and so far, uh, everybody is being quite respectful of that. Uh, we haven't had any complaints um, from students uh, of kids making fun of them or giving them a hard time. So um, it's a really good thing that, that people are being respectful of that. Um, and I want to thank you for the pizza because the kids love the Friday pizza. So um, it's been a nice change for them. They look forward to it and ask where it's from every week. So um, hope maybe it's drumming up some business for local people as well. So it's great. Um, we finally have a full administrative team at Webster Middle School, so we now have a principal, an assistant principal, and a dean of students. Um, so it's uh, nice, to, I can't say my desk is clear, but it's nice to actually be working on some of the things I need to do as a principal, um, as opposed to um, doing all three jobs uh, all the time. So um, that's going well, and we're, we're meeting and um, getting things done. Um, the next thing on my list was the BHS visits, but Dr. Gauguin already talked about that, so I don't need to reiterate that. Um, we are uh, going to be working collaboratively with the uh, public library. They have reached out to us. Um, they, are, uh, they have a program with a book called um, Orphan Train Girl by Christine, Christina 
I probably should wear my glasses. Christina Barr Klein, that would, that's much helpful. <laughs> um, and so they've offered to purchase books for us to get a book club started. And um, Mrs. Tucker, uh, one of our secretaries, has graciously accepted to do that because she has read the book and is very excited about starting the club. Um, so as soon as we get a list of students and know how many people are interested in that, we'll get the books ordered and um, continue our work with the public library. So it's a nice collaboration to have have that. Um, last Saturday, we had a food drive sponsored by the National Junior Honor Society. They collected food and hygiene products. Uh, they collected over 600 items, which wasn't as many as their previous collection, um, but 600 items is pretty good. Uh, it was a beautiful day for them to be out there collecting, and so that benefits, uh, again, local people uh, through the Southbridge Center of Hope. Um, we continue with our parent events at Webster Middle School. We've held four parent events. We've been trying to do a monthly event inviting parents in to talk about various topics uh, that might be of interest to them. Um, our guidance department has been working with admin to run those. Um, we unfortunately are going to be canceling March's event because we've only had two to four parents showing up. Um, for these events. So um, we've done surveys about what times and days parents want to come and what types of um, topics they want to discuss. And we're following all of the surveys that came back. You know, 90% said uh, 6 o'clock on a Wednesday or Thursday night. That's when we've been doing them. Um, so we're going to take a little break and reset. Uh, our next event will be um, for April, and that will focus on the eighth grade parents because the topic will be transitioning to high school. So as we start filling out um, uh, choices for classes and talking more about Bartlett that will be uh, hopefully of interest to eighth grade parents and um, we did however a couple of our fifth grade teachers held an event a couple weeks ago before vacation kind of a little pilot um, they invited their parents in to do a math event um, we didn't do the whole fifth grade at this point because they were just trying to see how it would go over and we had a really nice response from that so we're looking at expanding that to the entire fifth grade next time they do it. So they said it was a fun time. The parents got to ex um, experience what it was like in the math class and ask questions. And um, they brought their students with them. So they were able to kind of teach their parents. So um, they had a good time with that. Um, MCAS is coming up. So our first test is March 29th, starting with English Language Arts. Um, and that'll be a two-week event, and then math starts April 26th, and then um, STEM for grades 5 and 8 on May 17th. So the middle school is lucky enough to be able to test all four grades, so <laughs> unlike Park Ave and Bartlett, <laughs> so we will be busy uh, doing that in the next couple of months. Um, this isn't on my list, but I did want to update you on some really great things happening at the middle school. Um, Dr. Gogan said, you know, that we are really starting to get back into some normalcy, and uh, that's the same at Webster Middle School. It's, uh, we have some students who have initiated some clubs and have come to me recently to um, really excited about starting new things. So it's really nice when things are student initiated because then they have buy-in for that. And then they have a little responsibility of finding a teacher to help them run the club and they do the posters and everything. So we've, we've had a group of fifth graders um, probably since January. Um, every morning they come in with a huge bag full of trash. So they go around on their way to school collecting trash and then they bring it in. Um, so they're starting a club, a trash, they call themselves trash collectors. We were trying to get them to come up with a different name, but that's what they want, so that's what we're going to call it. <laughs> um, and we have another student, uh, seventh, seventh grade student, who's interested in doing a little something different with recycling. Um, she's noticed a lot of food waste and how we don't recycle in the cafeteria, so she wants to get something started uh, on those lines. So we're probably going to try to hook up those two clubs and run some kind of um, um, ecological club or something like that. 
Um, we've also been running a conspiracy club, again, named by the students. <laughs> so uh, we have some eighth grade students who are interested in um, uh, solving unsolved mysteries. So they're exploring, um, we're trying to get them some real cases, working with Officer Whiting. So they've been doing some of that and looking at conspiracy theories and all sorts of things. So it's nice to see some, some different things. And then um, another group wants to be um, counselor kids. And so we have to work with them a little bit on that one because we can't just send kids off to counsel other, other kids. So that'll be maybe more like a mentoring or a, a mediation kind of thing. So, um, so there's some exciting things going on with um, things at Webster Middle School. Very exciting. Thank you for the update. Any questions or comments from the committee? No? I just have one comment. Um, great job to hear about all the clubs and the kids initiating things. That's really wonderful. Um, in terms of the uh, partnership with the library, uh, I, I think it's great. Um, I know that the author of that book is coming to the community and will be working with your kids. I happen to have read that book. And if any of you are looking for a good, quick read, it's a wonderful book for middle school students, for any students, high school. So um, I think we're really lucky, again, once again, to have that community support to help us make things make sense to kids. So um, you'll have to keep us posted when that author is coming. And read the book, everybody. What's the name of the book again? Orphan Train Girl. OK. Thank you. It's really good. Thank you for your updates, Ms. Peterson. Lots of great things going on at Webster Middle School. The uh, next item on the agenda is the student representative update. Colin Menarek. Good evening, Colin. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I just want to start off with some quick updates. Um, the winter sports season is over. The girls, the girls basketball team finished eight and eleven, and the boys finished ten and twelve. Uh, we lost in the first round of playoffs. Very sad, but we had everyone had a great season, and. Um, Spring sports are starting up soon. Uh, Sign-ups are tomorrow after school. Uh, I encourage everyone to be there. And um, any questions on that? Any sport questions? Um, my next topic is the NHS is having a March Madness-themed spirit week. Uh, not week. Um, every Friday, they're doing a different theme for March Madness, so... Hopefully everyone in the school will participate. We'll see a big crowd, especially now that when not everyone wears masks, everyone seems brighter and happier, a lot of people. Um, myself, I'm much happier without it. I concentrate more. And um, progress supports for a third quarter are coming out soon, I believe. And that is all I have on my report for today. Any questions? Any questions for Colin? Through the chair. Yeah. Colin, did you choose a school yet? I have not yet. I'm waiting to hear back from a couple. Keep us posted. I will. Any other questions or comments? Thanks, Colin, for your updates. Anytime. Through the chair. Can I just go back to my question for a minute? Sure. Regarding the semi formal, um, have parents been notified and do you have information regarding ticket? Um, the parents were notified via my weekly update um, on Dojo last week, um, but I'll send... I've gotten bumped off. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> reach out to the main office I and we'll get you. Because sometimes that happens um, for some reason. Parents are getting the teachers, but uh, Dojos, but not the full school one. So um, check, check in with us. But um, post, uh, sales are happening during lunchtime. Tickets are $7. It's for 7th and 8th grade only. Um, and students may buy their tickets uh, during lunch. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions or comments for Colin or Ms. Peterson? No? Okay, well, thank you both. The next item on the agenda under old business is the COVID protocols update. Boy, I'll be glad when we have to stop doing those. Well, I'm glad to just report that in the last week, we've only had three students and two uh, staff. So we definitely are seeing a decline in COVID cases. 
And that concludes my COVID report. <laughs> we'll make it as Excellent. quick as that. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, the next item under old business is the monthly report on fundraising applications. Um, I'm pleased to let you know that the Bartlett High School Athletic um, Department is doing a food drive um, to uh, collect food for their co-ed volleyball tournament. Um, and Empty Bowls is back. So schedule that for April 29th. The Bartlett High School Art Department and that wonderful tradition that we have will be back in action in April. So there's no excuses. We're telling everyone well in advance to mark their calendars. So we're excited about that. Putting it in my calendar. Perfect. That's awesome. Great. Uh, any questions or comments from the committee about the uh, fundraising applications? No? Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Webster Middle School Improvement Plan update. Good evening again, Ms. Peterson. Hello again. Um, so I am assuming everyone got a copy of, okay. Um, so we had three uh, school priority goals for the year. Um, priority goal number one is student achievement and tier one instruction, which is instruction for all students. And our goal around that priority is to ensure strong on grade level instruction with just in time scaffolds when they are needed. Um, so scaffolds are helping students um, build to the level of independence. Um, so we continue to work with our Hill Literacy coaches. We actually have two coaches now. Um, one of them works with our general education staff, and the second works with our special education staff. And so that is going well. They um, alternate between coming into the building one week and then doing a virtual meeting with staff the next week. Um, so the virtual meeting is planning with the staff and going over questions. Um, and concerns, ways that Hill can help the teachers, and then the in-person uh, Hill comes into the classrooms and observes and um, coaches and guides teachers through the, their literacy work. Um, our academic in interventionists continue to meet with our teachers during common planning time, um, and our ILT examines data monthly to determine next steps for working with staff. So um, we're continually examining different kinds of data, whether it be our benchmarks from study sync curriculum, our iReady um, data, and our MCAS data is always um, part of anything we look at as well, in addition to um, weekly form formative data from classrooms. Um, department meetings are always focused on review of data, and our common planning time is used to develop Tier 1 lessons. Um, the SSOS team has worked with our uh, admin, ILT, and other teachers conducting monthly walkthroughs, uh, focus learning walks. We actually have one coming up on Thursday, so um, our ILT, uh, this is our fourth one. Um, for this year, and so we go into, uh, there are three teams, and each team goes into three classes, different classes, so we see nine classes uh, amongst the teams, and we have a, a focus area that we look at, um, and then we come ba at, back together as a full team and point out areas of strength that we're seeing across the building, and then areas of uh, things we need to work on across the building. Um, so that has been exciting because we are actually moving toward um, building some capacity among the full staff, not just ILT, but um, we've had two uh, other teachers not on the ILT join last month, and then on Thursday we have two different teachers joining us. So it kind of gives them an idea of, of sharing um, and that this isn't an evaluative uh, piece that we're doing. It, it's collaborative work around all of our goals. Um, so that's priority number one. Questions on that before I go to number two. Um, priority number two is responding to evidence of student learning. So it ties into number one. It's the number one's really the overarching goal of all of our following goals. And the goal around priority two is to continuous, continuous, 
continuously monitor and respond to students' understanding. So we continue to work on developing classroom models where there is time to utilize tier two instruction in the tier one classroom. And so um, for people watching at home, uh, tier one is what we consider what every student gets. And that's your usually your main lesson, what's happening in the classroom. Tier two is, uh, we, I referred to scaffolding earlier in, in the first priority is that each student is getting different things so that they're they're learning everything they need to for tier one. So an example might be um, as an English teacher, we read a story together and then breaking into tier two, we have different groups. One group may be focusing on comprehension, another group may be focusing on phonemic awareness, another group may be focusing on writing, so based on the needs of the students. So we've really been working on tier one instruction, but building that tier two in the classroom, not pulling kids out. So that's been a focus area for us. So this involves um, examining time management around our 90 minute English and math blocks because 90 minutes is a long time, but it, it, the way we have to divide it up, it's very useful time for the students. Um, we use our iReady and Study Sync benchmarks to um, as benchmarks and we continue to develop weekly assessments that are common amongst uh, all the teachers in the grade level. We continue to use common planning, department time, ILT and faculty meetings, again, focusing on data and reflection and how we're using that data, how to move, use the data to drive us forward. And we've started looking at EWIS, which is the Early Warning Indicator System, uh, and other daily data to monitor students who are in need of multiple interventions to ensure long-term success. So if you're not familiar with EWIS, it is an indicator, just as it says, uh, an early warning indicator. It kind of um, points out, it, it, it looks at different indicators testing, attendance, discipline, um, uh, transit, transiency, moving from district to district, uh, and, and pulls out students who are at risk of possibly dropping out of school in the future. So that's where we wanna make sure we catch that before it gets to that point. So we're just starting to look at that data and really delve into um, how EWIS can help us. Um, that's at the ground level right now. And we've completed two rounds of our response to intervention and we are examining currently our data to start round three, hopefully starting um, new groups on March 14th. Questions on priority two? A lot of initials and jargon, so please. So far so good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, and then finally, school priority number three is a sense of belonging, and our goal is to foster a sense of belonging and partnership among students and families. So we continue to work with our PBIS. Um, the PBIS team uh, worked over the summer and updated our expectations, and our new acronym for Webster Middle School is ROAR, which matches our Wildcats uh, mascot, but it stands for responsibility, um, ownership, um, and accepting um, acceptance, and I said responsibility, I always mix up the two R's, and respectfulness, <laughs> so that's what roars. Um, we have monthly grade level community meetings where students are recognized for positive behaviors and accomplishments. Our guidance and admin team review attendance weekly and work on um, uh, strategies for getting students with high absenteeism into school and finding the root of uh, why they're not in school. Um, we, again, I've talked about the monthly parent events, so you can certainly read that. Our second step is curriculum that's utilized in our guidance classes, and Naviance has started being utilized in our grades six through eight guidance classes. We continue to have spirit weeks. Uh, we've had November, December, and February. And to promote participation, um, we've offered hot chocolate bar to uh, homerooms who uh, had the highest percentage in um, participation. 
Um, we've been working on updating our website, and so hopefully that's, um, uh, you're seeing some uh, good changes there. Um, and then I'm doing a weekly update to families via Dojo, and I know that a lot of our teachers and teams do that as well, in addition to the monthly newsletter um, that everybody gets with all three of our newsletters through Dr. Gogan. Um, and, uh, of course, translations for all materials uh, sent through the main office and through Dojo. That's number three. Thank you, Ms. Peterson. Sure. Questions or comments from the committee? Through the chair. Blythe? Um, Ms. Peterson, can you just explain to me, I'm familiar with Naviance at the high school level, you just explain to me how it's used at the middle school level? Sure. So it's basically used at the middle school level to, uh, as a baseline, really to start getting students uh, looking into what they might want to do in the future. So it's, you know, the high school, Naviance, uh, does a lot with application process and your letters and um, letters of interest in um, your essays and all of that but really they do a lot of surveys on um, what your likes and dislikes are and kind of you know focus on you know you might be good in this type of job or you're good with people and so just really honing in on kind of where they can go and look at Thank you. through the chair yes miss millet I'm just, I'm curious to, to know what your thoughts are about um, why your parent events aren't attended. Is it just, let me add this, because <laughs> you know, 32 years, I've only been retired two years. There were two things that we used to get parents in, and one is having it be social. Mm -hmm. In other words, having some food and coffee and tea, and it, it becomes a social event. And the other is that time, because a lot of our parents do not have transportation to get to the school. Mm -hmm. So it might be, I don't know, that you have two different ones at two different times. I don't know. What are your feelings? Um, I, I like, thank you for suggesting some of those because um, we did, we have offered food. We've done pizza. And so I, we took a lot of pizza home one time. Um, uh, we've done pizza. We've done coffee. I've done um, uh, treat bags. Uh, we did a wellness event and filled um, personal bags with wellness things. Um, we actually, the last one, we offered babysitting. We, uh, NJHS kids came in and we offered babysitting. Um, that drew in one new parent. So, you know, I always say if I get two parents, that's two parents that we're reaching. I would love to reach more and spread the word more. Um, so, I think offering different um, times might be a good idea. I think maybe maybe just a social event instead of a topic might be a good idea. Um, maybe just a potluck dinner or something. I don't, I don't know, but um, I wish I had the answer because we would have changed things <laughs> three months ago. <laughs> so, um, But yeah, um, thank you for the suggestion. We're looking to doing that further. Well, certainly you have to start somewhere, right? Right, exactly. It doesn't exactly. typically yeah. um, go from nothing to huge attendance overnight. Right. So, And I think, um, you know, the topics are kind of heavier topics, like bullying and um, students changing bodies was our last one. And so the math night is a little different that, you know, parents came to that, so maybe something less heavy. Um, so some things to, to think about. Another idea, um, uh, Ms. Peterson, is that everyone loves to come out and hear the music. The kids play their music. Maybe you could join two events where parents could cycle in and out of hearing the kids play the music and then go into another classroom for a topic. Um, and, and I know prior to COVID, we also had access um, to the community room over at um, North Village. Um, and we, ha we have held some successful groups there. Um, but I think keep brainstorming. I want to compliment you and your team for 
doing parent nights um, with some level of consistency this year. Um, and I also want to uh, publicly thank uh, Ms. Peterson and her ILT team because the work that they've done around uh, learning walks has been extensive. I think, you know, as a turnaround school, one of the things that you need to focus on is distributive leadership. And your ILT is a strong ILT team. And those learning walks are really theirs. And they're communicating with their peers about what they're seeing. And it isn't evaluative. And people are really open and receptive at the middle school to doing the, the learning walks. The SAUCE team also is very... Uh, quite pleased with the progress in that area. And we've been working with SAUCE for the five years I've been here. And we're at a level in your building with the learning walks that you really could just toss it to them. And, and, and it's working and functioning. And now that you're pulling in all teachers, I just want to give you some kudos for that. Nice work. Clearly lots of good things happening. Um, I'm happy to help with spreading the word about other parent nights as they come up. Um, especially, I think Ms. Millett's point about some type of food yeah. um, is always, you know, well received. But I'm happy to share it out on social media or um, anywhere if it would be helpful. Great, any help? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Sure. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about the grade level communications that are happening? Sure. Um, so each um, each grade level. <laughs> I believe all of them are doing something, whether it's a newsletter or a weekly information, and they do all that through Dojo. So just the parents of those students are getting um, information, um, whether it be this is what we're working on this week for curriculum, or we're going to be reading this book, or um, those kinds of things. So, Thanks. Any other questions or comments for Ms. Peterson? Thank you for your updates and for all the work that's going into this plan. Of course. The next item on the agenda under new business is the approval of an out-of-state field trip. Bartlett High School art students going to Storm King Art Center in New Windsor, New York. Any out-of-state field trip requires the school committee's approval. I would certainly highly recommend um, this trip for our students um, and thank our art teachers for um, taking our kids there. Great, thank you. Any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, out-of-state field trip. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Laurie, would you please pull the committee? Yeah. Yes. 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 Motion passes. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is the acceptance of a donation of school art supplies from a Webster Middle School parent. Thank you. There is a picture of the school supplies in your school committee packet. I um, do not have the name of the parent. I believe it's anonymous, um, and we just want you to accept it. And I'm sure that Ms. Peterson has distributed those supplies to those who may need it. Great. Any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to accept the uh, donation of school supplies. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you please pull the committee? Yep. Yes. 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 Yes, the motion passes. Thank you to that parent for your generosity. The next item on the agenda is the review, transfer, signing of warrants, bills, payroll, and vouchers. I understand we have a transfer request. Questions or comments? I will entertain a motion to approve the transfer request in the amount of $16,849.61. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you please pull the committee? Yes. 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 Motion passes.
I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Lori, would you please pull the committee? Yes. 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 Good night, everyone. <laughs>